Thanks, Graham. Uh, that intro, which included the, uh, the stuff about home access, reminded me, uh, some of you may know that uh, before I became chairman of Vector, I spent a spell as the e envoy, the government's e envoy. And I started that job in October 2000. And my very first event uh, in, as e envoy my second day in the job was to go to the annual dinner of the Internet Service Providers Association uh, in somewhere, I don't know, one of the big, uh, big hotels in, in Park Lane. A couple of thousand people there, big dinner, a lot of people very drunk, and I was speaking after the dinner, so they'd had about five bottles of wine each by the time I was on. And it was right at the time uh, when the government, or rather the Home Office, with their typical sensitivity and subtlety have been introducing the Regulatory and, and Investigatory Powers Act, which is really quite draconian measures, loaded a whole pile of stuff onto the internet service provider's uh, plate, and they hated it. They were completely up in arms. And I was booed onto the stage, and I was booed off the stage after my speech. They were, didn't want to listen to anything. Uh, your piece about home access, which I'm going to come back to, reminded me of, in a much more polite and gentle way of that. So, but let me just, I will deal with home access in a minute, but let me just talk about Bechter first of all and what it is we're trying to do. We're delighted first of all to be here and, and we're grateful to be invited. We're delighted to support the conference and those of you who were here yesterday would have seen some of our people and some of the examples that we have around schools in the UK showing the excellent stuff that is going on in a relatively small number of schools around the UK. There's some great stuff out there which we're very, um, we're very pleased to be associated with. We're very pleased to be associated with this conference too. And Graham, if I may say so, we're very glad you're having, a, having this conference at this venue next year, and we would like to support you in that event as well. So we can say, first of all, we will be here if you ask us to be here. Vector has been around as an organization for many years. Um, it's a worthy organization. It's been producing very good quality uh, guidance to schools and to, and to colleges about how to use technology effectively in the education system. It does lots of events, it's been around to lots of schools. But it is, and it has been, a worthy organization. All those years of effort, um, and all the years of the effort of the, the IT industry as a whole, have led to some excellent examples, as those of you who were here yesterday saw, of great use of technology um, in the education system. But most people in the education system aren't using that technology. And so, over the last year or so, we've come to the conclusion that we need to launch a very big surge, to use the General Petraeus example from Iraq, the rather in happier circumstances, I hope, uh, to do something about that, to fix that issue, to bring the benefits of that technology to a much larger group of learners, hopefully to all learners, and, and to improve the efforts of teachers in every school, in every further education establishment, to improve their effectiveness in teaching. So we're about raising our game right now, and we're, we're taking a lot of, tr putting a lot of effort into doing that, into raising our game and get, reaching out to a far larger group of people to bring about some major change. Now, why are we doing that? We're doing it because we know this stuff works. You've seen some great examples of it. It looks great. It looks exciting. But actually, there's been some hard academic research done as well, which proves that it works in terms of the thing that we're interested in, which is educational outcomes. We know that if you use technology effectively, in the hands of the right people, used consistently with kids, you can raise educational attainment in, for example, 11 to 14 year olds in things like English, math, science, design technology, by about half a GCSE grade. We know that you can radically improve the, the reading ability of 11 year olds by using technology effectively. This stuff really does work. In the higher education sector, or rather the further education sector in particular, the use of technology effectively by, by people in, education, in further education colleges improves retention rate radically. So again, we get better educational outcomes at that level. So this stuff doesn't look, just look good. It doesn't just look sexy. Actually, it is sexy, and it works. And it's a disgrace that it's not being used more widely and we want to try and fix that. More to the point, even more to the point, our audience, the eight or nine million learners out there, are demanding that we use it more effectively. You know even better than I 
just how, how much young people in particular are taking to the use of technology. It is a way of life. It is natural to them. Schools, plus perhaps voting, are often the only occasions when they don't use technology effectively. In voting, they use a stubby pencil tied to a, a voting booth. In schools, often, they're still seeing out-of-date technology, chalk and a, white, and a blackboard, or just a plain whiteboard being used. Those are the only two examples in their lives where they're not seeing technology used effectively. Often, their schools have got much worse technology than they have in their homes. And that's demotivating for them, it's puzzling for them, and it does nothing to prepare them for the life that they're going to have outside school, after school, when they go out, out into the employment world, when we now know that about 95% of new jobs all require the use of technology, the use of facilities with technology, and we know, according to the Leach Report, that in the UK, by about 2020, compared to the 6 million unskilled jobs there are around now, there will be half a million unskilled jobs around now. The use of technology is going to be essential for these people leaving the education system. And therefore, we have to teach them how to use technology. And what better way to teach them how to use technology than actually to use technology in teaching them? So back to making big efforts to try to improve the use of technology in the education system. And that means convincing teachers that this stuff works. We're doing that. Convincing them that they shouldn't be frightened of it, that's harder, but we're also trying to do that. And convincing learners, their parents, and those people who care for learners to demand it from their schools. So we're launching a campaign called Next Generation Learning, which is trying to get people to understand the benefits that technology can bring to the education system. Home access is part of that. Let me just deal with home access and get that off, off the table. Home access is us saying we are pissed off with people telling us, that teachers telling us, that they can't, for example, set homework for kids using technology because not all kids have got access to technology. The poorest kids, often the kids with the least attainment, the lowest attainment, kids with the least support at home, often are the people who don't have access to technology and therefore, everyone else suffers because of those kids. So for a while, we've been working on persuading ministers, persuading the government, that they need to spend some money to fix that problem. And the home access approach is our attempt to fix that problem. There are about a million learners out there which, who do not have connectivity to the internet, something that's essential if you're going to set homework and other study work outside the home that can integrate with schoolwork. We wanted to try and fix that problem, and that's why the Prime Minister announced the other week that we're going to be spending about £350 million in dealing with the poorest kids, but also we're going to be putting together some schemes to deal with every other kid, every other learner as well. Now, we're announcing further details next week. But it's been interesting looking at the blogosphere uh, and listening to Graham, for example, uh, this paranoia that occurs amongst people who regard themselves as a threatened group of people, the handheld technology guys, who are producing some great stuff, some leading edge stuff, sulking about not being invited to a party. Now, if you knew there was a good party going on and you've got some friends going to it, why the hell don't you turn up? We will be announcing how this scheme is going to operate next week, or rather we're going to be announcing how the pilot of this scheme is going to be operating next week. It is not home access PCs. It is home access. What we're looking for are devices and connectivity providing access to the internet at a decent price, and we're going to give the poorest kids vouchers, variations on vouchers, to access that. And we're going to try to put, get the industry, the wider industry, to group together and produce packages that will appeal to all other learners as well. There will be some minimum specifications. It does not have to be a PC. But people have got to be able to have connectivity to a screen so that they and perhaps their carer can see it. So just a mobile phone by itself will not be enough. But a mobile phone with connectivity, decent power, decent and connectivity to a screen may be enough. 
We want to try and learn how to use, how this scheme might work. So we want to work with anybody who wants to come and play, including people who not necessarily got the written invitation to the party, or perhaps haven't looked at their emails recently, but should come to the party. And this scheme will start off with two local authorities. They'll be announced next week. One local authority in a rural area. One local authority in an urban area. And we're going to run it for a few months, perhaps up to a year, to learn how to administer it properly, and also to learn what devices work and how to build the interaction between what happens at home and what happens in the educational establishment, school or further education college. We hope we're moving on to adult learners at some point in the future. That's the plan. We would like you to join in that plan. We want all sorts of ideas. We want, we want the mobile phone providers, we want the mobile device providers, anybody who's interested in putting together packages that will work in that environment have got the next few months to start thinking about how they might do that. And we want to cooperatively work with people to do that. It's very important we do this because, as I said, we're interested in outcomes. We're not interested in promoting Microsoft or Intel or the major PC providers. For us, and some of these guys have appreciated this over the last few months, so for us, what we're interested in is getting a good deal for the learner that improves outcomes. Anybody who can help us do that, we're keen on. And we will drive some hard bargains, we'll be a tough taskmaster, we'll be aggressive and difficult, but what we're interested in is proper outcomes, educational outcomes. And if you can contribute to that, you're very welcome at this party. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to do over the next few months is, first of all, get behind our campaign of next generation learning. A lot of people are already starting to get behind it. Some of the major retailers will be behind it. Some of the major providers will be behind it. We hope that some of the software companies will be behind it. We hope that you will be behind it to help support this next generation learning campaign. We will be providing a series of major set piece events. We'll be providing websites and support, explaining to parents and carers what they should be expecting from their schools, explaining to learners what they should be expecting, and trying to help teachers to make the most of this technology. But we also want spontaneous groups to spring up in the spirit of next generation learning. Think of it, if you will, as something like children in need, or comic relief, where you have an underlying theme, a general good cause, something that's trying to deliver an outcome, which is the better use of technology in the education system. We want people to join with us, run their own events. We want schools to build their own events. We want providers to build their own events that go along with that theme, anything to generate momentum to improve the effect of this surge we're trying to produce. To take us from the 15 to 20 percent of schools that use technology even approaching effectively to over the next two or three years getting that number to 80 percent of schools using technology effectively. Now we can't do that without you helping. We think there's a place for mobile technology, indeed some of the examples that you've seen are using mobile technology to help people learn effectively. Handheld technology is crucial as a component of producing decent outcomes, and we would like you to join our campaign and help us achieve it. I think that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. Would you mind taking a couple of questions? Well, while we have the, uh, oops, while we have the chairman of Vector on, on the stage, there's a little opportunity. We've got a couple of minutes. We can sure. ask him a question. We, you can text them in, but we didn't get any just yet. So we've got some roving mics. Uh, it would be great to if somebody iPhone. would to like to. IPhone, no. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Prinsky at the front here. If you could wait for the. Wait, excuse me, Mark, if you could, because we're just recording, it would be great. Thanks. Sorry. Mark Prinsky. Has Vecta been coordinating with similar organizations in other countries around the world? We've, done, we've spent a lot of time trying to talk to other countries around the world, people like the, the Singaporeans, for example, some of the school boards in the United States, uh, the state of Victoria in Australia. We're also talking to other organizations who are working with other organizations around the world, as it were. So we're, we're trying to gather knowledge from around the world, but we're welcoming 
any experiences that people have got. So if you've got something, then, uh, then write to me. Write to me at Vector. Email me at Vector. We want to work with people around the world. We think this is a worldwide thing. We are, in, uh, in January, organizing a worldwide conference. We've got a large number. How many Tony, how many countries have we got turning up at... Uh, I'll, I'll repeat this. I'll, re I'll repeat this. We're organizing a large conference, which will be actually be held at the QE2 Center, a couple of days before the BET conference at Olympia. We've invited more or less every country in the world to come and join it. And we've had how many acceptances so far at uh, ministerial level? Uh, about 70 acceptances. So we are trying to work with other countries who are trying to do the same thing. And we want, this is not competitive. We're trying to make sure that we spread the use of, good use of technology around the world. We will learn from other people. We hope that they will learn from us as well. Tony Parkin from the Special Schools and Academies Trust. Hi there, Andrew. I wonder if you could say something about what outcomes you're going to be measuring against apart from the, G, the half a GCSE grade that you've cited earlier as an outcome. And the second question is, you seem to be talking about a problem of last generation teaching rather than next generation learning. <laughs> we, I think we have a next generation that already are learning. Isn't the issue more about how we're going to get the schools to engage with it? And, and telling parents that they need to, I think the parents already may know, and the children may know, it's more about a program to address the teachers, is it not? I think you're sort of half right, mainly right. Uh, there's certainly a, a, a problem of past generations of teaching. And that's a, a, pro a generational problem to a large extent. You know, we know that young teachers, teachers in their first two or three, four or five years of, of teaching, are much better using technology than older teachers, teachers of longer in the tooth. There are exceptions to that. Older teachers, some older teachers, are making great use of technology because they're great teachers and they suddenly start understanding how to use the technology well. But largely speaking, uh, we are dealing with the problem of teachers finding it difficult to use technology and feel comfortable with it, partly because the technology sometimes is unreliable. They don't have the right sort of support in schools. Technology, technology falls over, and that's embarrassing when you, you've got a gang of 30 rambunctious 15-year-olds in your, in your classroom. Trying to deal with that and dealing with the, the disruptive effect of having some kid come up and say, hey, miss, or hey, sir, I'll fix that for you, and fixing it for them, that's, that's a problem for them. And we're trying to help them do that. So we'd, we're launching a lot of effort into trying to improve teachers' understanding of how to use technology effectively. We also want to improve the infrastructure that's out there. Some schools have got excellent infrastructure. Some providers provide schools with excellent infrastructure. It works all the time. But often, you find schools where the technology itself is flaky. It's held together with a couple of bits of string and a, and a coat hanger. It's not effective, not reliable. Uh, and, and teachers themselves are nervous about it. They, they start at the beginning of a lesson, they think, is this actually going to work or not? So trying to deal with that, trying to get an addressable addressable base for people to be able to sell on sufficient scale into schools, to be able to sell robust solutions or robust services to support the infrastructure is also important to us. You say, though, that actually learners have already got it. Well, I think that most young people, as you all know, use technology very effectively or use some technology very effectively, obviously mobile phones and other devices like PlayStations and so on. But the they don't know how to use it in the educational context always. They need support in understanding how to differentiate what they're accessing over the internet or accessing over their mobile phones, separate out the wheat from the chaff, so they need help in understanding what's good on the internet, what's bad on the internet, what they can rely on. Uh, parents, I think I disagree with you. Some parents, 10, 15% of parents, we think, really support their kids very well, including through the use of technology. Most parents have provided computers at home. About three quarters of, of homes with, ch with children in them have computers in them of some description, and they use them effectively for educational purposes. But there, we think there's a big learning gap. We think, we think there's a major gap in which we can help fill by helping parents and other people who care for young people what to expect from the education system and what, they, what their kids are doing at school and how they can best help them at home. So I think that 
The situation isn't quite as rosy on the, as it were, on the demand side as you think. Certainly the supply side, the way that teachers use this technology needs to be improved and we're working very hard on that. But I think there's quite a lot to be done on the education, the demand side as well. On that note, I'd like to thank Andrew. Thank you.